It's never been a better time to be a Revon customer. When you sign up or switch to Revon Broadband Internet, not only do you receive free installation, a free modem, and three months of service for free, you are also automatically entered to win up to $5,000 in prizes, like a 60-inch smart HDTV with Bose surround sound system and Rev TV Premium, Rev Voice home phone service, complete with a portable phone system, a laptop, and Revon Extreme Broadband Internet service. Already a Revon customer? No problem. You are also eligible to win a prize package as well. What are you waiting for? Call us to sign up or switch today. Cubans intensify their protest against the Bahamas. But this defamatory nonsense that they're running on with, I think, as I said, people are just fed up with it. The government plans on fighting back. The Defense Force expected to step in to assist police in the crime fight very soon. No doubt before the end of the month. And the Goombay Festival is more than just a fun event. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of business since I started, yeah. Tonight we take a look at those stories and more. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. everyone, thanks for joining us this Saturday here at Cable 12 Studios. The government is preparing to repatriate all Cuban detainees currently held at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. This is Cuban protesters continue their hunger strikes in Miami over alleged abuse of Cuban detainees in the Bahamas. And their health has reportedly deteriorated, but they say they won't stop the protests. Now, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigration Fred Mitchell says that's their business, stating that this issue has brought too much unnecessary negative attention to the country. My old thing is I believe Bahamians themselves are now really just too interested in this. This is a group of almost professional protesters. This is what they do. Uh, and this is to rattle our cages. My view from the start has been not to engage them um, and just do the work which we normally do. Cuban advocacy group Democracy Movement sent out a statement yesterday claiming that the health of Jesus Alexis Gomez and Ramon Saul Sanchez is at a critical stage, but the men won't quit their hunger strike. Gomez has been protesting for 22 days and has reportedly lost 26 pounds. The group claims he is weak, has signs of muscular fatigue and dehydration. Sanchez, who reportedly has diabetes, is said to be in grave danger. He has been protesting for 15 days. The group is also heavily promoting a boycott of traveling to the Bahamas until several Cuban detainees are released. In terms of those who are to be repatriated to Cuba, I'm advised that the Cuban government has given the okay for those and so they'll be going back uh, as soon as we can arrange a flight. As for the fate of the three Cuban migrants who filed a writ of habeas corpus asking the court to release them based on various allegations of abuse, Mitchell said Mauricio Valdez, Randy Rodriguez and Pedro Parado will remain in Her Majesty's prison until another country is willing to take them in. Deportation orders have already been signed. You know that that case was adjourned to await an adjudication from the Americans. So there's no, that, that just awaits the adjudication by the Americans. Cubans in Miami, Florida have staged a series of protests against the treatment of Cuban detainees after a video aired on a Spanish language TV station purporting to show Cuban detainees at the detention center being beaten by Bahamian officers. They're also calling on detainees to be released. The government and the Royal Bahamas Police Force have both dismissed the video as fake. If there's a problem in the, in the uh, detention center, we investigate it as a matter of course. Uh, if people have a right to asylum, we grant them asylum. Uh, if they're going to go back to their home countries, they go back to their home countries. Now, the procedures are not optimum, but we're always working on them. Investigations by the police and defense forces into the claims of abuse will be augmented by a formal investigation headed by a former justice of the Court of Appeal and a senior member of the religious fraternity. Also, Mitchell and National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage traveled to Cuba this week to begin migration talks with the Cuban government. 
Now, Mitchell also condemned a message appearing on a large container trailer that was recently paraded through the streets of Miami by the Cuban advocacy group Democracy Movement as an attack on the character of the Prime Minister, Perry Christie. Here's a photo of that trailer. Now, you may have already seen the photo as it has been circulating on social media since Thursday. The message that we've blurred out refers to the alleged mistreatment of undocumented migrants in the Bahamas. Mitchell said the government found the message on the trailer libelous and defamatory and said the government would get lawyers on it. In a statement released yesterday, the Foreign Affairs Minister said the message not only injures the Bahamas' reputation, but is a baseless and personal attack on the character of the Prime Minister. He said the government denounced this latest slander. When contacted by our news team yesterday, Democracy Movement representative Ramon Saul Sanchez said the group had a motorcade with signs disparaging the Bahamas drive through Miami on Thursday and another motorcade is planned for Monday. He said the group is doing this because the government insists that the video is a fake. But Democracy Movement is insisting that the video is authentic. Now, Sanchez said the group knows that the Bahamas is full of good people and it has much respect for Bahamians. And it will lift the protest and boycott once its requests are granted. Well, in other news, police are providing an update on a story we ran last night about an Eleuthera man who was shot three times in his legs by a police officer on that island earlier this week after he struggled with the officer and managed to put him in a chokehold during a nearly eight-minute altercation. As you saw last night, the incident, which happened on Monday and was not reported by police until we asked about it yesterday, was captured on a cell phone camera by an eyewitness. The family of the man who was shot identified him as Kelson Antonio Ferguson, 28 years old, of North Eleuthera. He is in Princess Margaret Hospital awaiting surgery. Today, police confirm that Ferguson is now in police custody and senior police officials are looking closely at the case and more details should be coming out about it in the coming days. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage revealed plans earlier this year to deploy 150 Royal Bahamas Defense Force officers to assist police in the crime fight. Well, that is expected to happen by the end of this month. Nottage told NB12 that he had a meeting with heads of the law enforcement agencies last week where they discussed the operational requirements for the move. He also explained why they're waiting until the end of August. It's a question of, of need. And... Um, if you notice over the over in, in in during the month of June and July, there wasn't as great a need as we anticipate there will be uh, in the period coming up to the opening of school and all that. So, um, no doubt before the end of the month. Nodded said the use of the defense force to assist with policing is not meant to be permanent. He said the prime minister has indicated that he plans to make funds available to get as many police officers as needed.